questions now or forever hold your peace. These are your solutions, right? Our real solutions represent our x-intercepts, right? So these are the x values where the graph crosses the x-axis, OK? So we can set them equal to 0. Um, however, to write them as a polynomial, we can write all of our solutions or all of our zeros as factors. To write them as factors, we set them equal to, we set our factor equal to 0. So therefore, we have x plus 1 equals 0, x minus 3 equals 0, and x minus 4 equals 0. The reason why we set each factor equal to 0 is basically just doing the, re, um, the zero product property in reverse. If we have factors equal to 0, then we know we can rewrite them as the product of factors equal to 0. Do you guys see how this is kind of like the exact uh, like working backwards? If you have a set of factors, do you remember the last problem we did? I mean, the first problems we did. When you have a set of factors equal to 0, to find the zeros, what do you do? You set each factor equal to 0, and then you solve. right? And that's how you get the solution. So basically, all I'm doing is doing this in reverse. It's all you're doing. Because now, you're not trying to say, when is this equal to 0? In reality, we're trying to figure out, when is this, you know, what is the value that's set equal to y? What is this equation that we're solving for? So Julian, to do that, what you're simply going to do is just multiply these out. Now, you guys can use the box method. You guys can use distributed property. Whatever really case you may be. I'm going to do the distributive property for the first one, and then I'll do the box one for the next. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. x times 1 is x. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So that times x minus 4 equals y. I can simplify that. x squared to minus 2x minus 3 times x minus 4. Okay. Now, you can do distributive property again um, using like kind of the foiling technique. However, I prefer, whenever I'm dealing with something greater than a 2 by 2, to create a box. And then I'll just put one, pop, uh, one binomial or one factor on one side and put the other factor on the other side and have the, fa and have the terms of the factors represents the length and the width of a box. Now, I simply just need to multiply to find the area of each box. x times x squared is x cubed x times negative 2x is negative 2x squared. x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. x squared times negative 4 is a negative 4x squared. negative 4 times negative 2x is a positive 8x. negative 4 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 12. What's nice about this method is when you multiply this out here, here, I mean, I'm so used to doing FOIL, and, and you, know, you guys will probably be pretty familiar with this. But a lot of times when you're doing something with this, numbers start getting everywhere, and it gets confusing. So I like this because not only does it keep it organized, but it also has your like terms on the diagonal, as long as your factors are in standard form. So when I'm writing this out, my final answer is y equals x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x plus 12. And then that's your final answer.